Hi scholars, I'm so excited to be reading with you today. We're gonna to continue with a new biography. We know that a biography is a true description of a real person's life. Today, we get to learn about Richard Wright and the library card. As we read about Richard Wright and learn more information about him, because we know that's the purpose of reading a biography, is to learn more about the person who it is about. So we're gonna hear more information about the goals, childhood, and accomplishments of Richard Wright. Before we get going, there's a few different things that we need to discuss. One, I want us to name that we're gonna be continuing to work on character motivation. Even though this biography is about a real person, we still take the same steps that we would to figure out the motivation of a character from a made up story. So we know we're gonna be figuring out why these people or characters did something by looking for what the characters want, by giving text evidence and thinking what the character feels, and this will help us better understand the characters or the people. You guys have been doing a great job of meeting the CFS. We know that means to include the character or people's names, the characters or people's wants, and our text evidence. We've been using this formula to help us. We're gonna to continue to do that today, and you can keep doing that to make sure you're always on track for being a great reader in your responses. The second thing we need to discuss is a few different pieces of information that are helpful for us to understand the time period in which Richard Wright lived. So Richard Wright grew up and was a young man in the 1920s and 1930s. Like we've talked about before, dis discrimination and segregation were very common against black people in the United States at this time, especially in the South. And in the 1940s, Richard Wright became an extremely successful author. He wrote books like Native Son and Black Boy. And these are still very common books today that people read and respect. Let's go ahead and get started with Richard Wright and the library card. What are you guys wondering after looking at the cover and hearing some of that information about him? Let's go ahead and get started reading so we can answer some of your questions. Richard loved the sound of words. He loved the stories his mother told about the farm where she grew up. There was a willow tree by a bend in the river, she explained. I dreamed all my girl dreams down there. Richard loved to hear his grandfather talk about the war, how he ran away and fought the rebel for the rebel army. I was only a boy, his grandfather said proudly, but I fought as well as any man. I fought in the rain and the mud. I carried the flag at the head of the troops. So what we previewed before the story about how Richard Wright became a very successful author helps us understand this part in the text. It says that he loved words in the stories. So that lets us know Richard's motivation and why he wanted to write all of these different books because of his love for words and stories. Richard longed to read stories on his own, but his family was very poor. They moved often looking for work in different towns and cities. His father cleaned office buildings. His mother cooked in the kitchens of wealthy white people. Richard had little chance to go to school. His mother taught him when she could, reading the funny papers out loud, sounding each word carefully. Hmm. So in the text it says that his mother cooked in the kitchens of wealthy white people and that Richard had little chance to go to school and so his mother taught him when she could. That tells me that Richard White's mother wanted what was best for her son. She wanted him to be able to enjoy reading and benefit from reading different books. That's why she decided to teach him on his own. When Richard finally learned to read, he couldn't buy or borrow the books he wanted so badly. Books were expensive, and the doors of the library were shut against him because he was black. So Richard read whatever he could find, old newspapers, books without covers pulled from ash cans. When Richard was 17, he caught a bus to Memphis. He hoped to find work and earn enough money to move to Chicago, where he would make a new life for himself in the North. We've learned and been talking about how segregation and extreme discrimination was very common during this time, especially in the South. So that helps us to understand why the doors of the library were closed to Richard Wright because he was black. 
Richard walked the hot streets looking for a job that would be his ticket to freedom. He saw many young men, like himself, searching for the same job, the same way out. Let's stop and think about what Richard is hoping for when the text says he's looking for a job that would be his ticket to freedom. Let's think about that a little bit more. We learned that segregation and discrimination was common, and we read that Richard hoped to move to Chicago to make a new life for himself. So that makes me think Richard was looking for a ticket to freedom because Richard wants to find and live a very successful life, even if that means being in Chicago. So he finally found a place in an optician's office. He polished eyeglasses, swept the floors, and ran errands for the white men. Just in case you didn't know, an optician's office is an eye doctor's office. You can tell, and we know that from the text as well, because there's different pictures of eyeglasses, this little chart that sometimes you use when you're getting your eyes checked, and it says that he was polishing eyeglasses. So he's working at an eye doctor now. And as long as he kept his head down, and as long as he began every sentence with sir, Richard was safe. At night, Richard returned to the boarding house where he rented a room. To save money, he ate beans from the can, warmed by water from the tap. Listening to the noise of the street below his window, Richard felt a familiar hunger for words. There were thousands of books in the public library, but only white people could get a card, could take them out. But Richard had an idea. At work, he, he looked around the office, trying to find one man who might understand his hunger for books. For the most part, they were like so many white men he had known before. They would never understand that a black boy wanted a library card or a black boy who wanted to read books, even, that, even books they didn't read. Only one man seemed different from the others. Jim Falk kept to himself, and the other men ignored him, as they ignored Richard. Several times, Richard had been sent to the library to check out books for him. One day, when the other men were out to lunch, and Jim was eating alone at his desk, Richard approached him. I need your help, Richard said. Are you in some kind of trouble? Jim asked with a suspicious look. I want to read books. I want to use the library, but I can't get a card, Richard, sa Richard said, hoping Jim would not laugh in his face. What do you want to read? Jim asked, cautiously. Novels, plays, history? Hmm. So that was interesting and something that we might not have been expecting. Let's think, why did Richard ask Jim Falk to, for help out of all the other white men in the office? That's going to be your thinking job today, scholars, to write out on a piece of paper or on a note in Seesaw. Why did Richard choose Jim Falk to ask for help out of all the men in the office? I know you guys can use and meet the CFS to make sure that you're fully understanding the story and Richard's motivation. You guys have got it.